Hi everyone, today we're going to look at acorns. They will be scattered throughout the woods, but what are we exactly looking for for the food? Well, you want to first look for oak trees. What kind of oak? Red oak. Botanical name? Corcus rubra. Now, here's a photo of what you're looking for of the type of look of the acorn that you're looking for for healthy ones the far left is a acorn that had a grub on it in it and the next one has a cap still on you do not want uh, any of those and any damaged acorns you don't want to as the next ones on the right of the photo you there is a good acorn you want to uh, harvest those ones when you're picking up so how do I harvest the acorns well I get a five gallon bucket and just go around and pick up the acorns now I'm gonna take my gloves off because it's easier without the gloves and I'm gonna just go around picking up the acorns that are good but I don't know exactly if they are 100% good so how do I tell well in uh, another shot I'm gonna show you how to do the float test all nuts should do a float test so I'm gonna pick up a few of the acorns here and I'll see you in the next video okay now we're in my workshop and I'm gonna show you how to process the acorns. First, you're gonna need some water. And, well, I'm using clear containers to show you a little bit exactly what I'm doing. So, I got the acorns right here. Brought them inside because it's below freezing outside and the hose does not work. Um, I can usually fill up this bucket halfway and do the float test. So what the float test is, is Basically, I just take the acorns, put them in. I only got a few to show you. And basically, you just see which acorns are good and which ones are bad. Pour the water right in. And the reason why I'm doing it inside is because your hands will get wet. And when it's cold out, it will be cold out. So, basically, you can see really closely of what is floating right on top. There's a couple acorns here, and then the good ones are more down here. So, we got the point of knowing which ones are a little bit better. So, pick out the bad ones. I'm going to just throw them into the container where I had my water. And then, now, what do I do with the uh, water? Well, I'm going to just pour it into where I had the water. So I pour off that water. And then I'm left with the better acorns. So that's the float test, what that is. But what do I do with the acorns? Well... Some of them, you just pick through them. You might find a bad one that sinks. So you discard that. Look through, make sure that they're all good. There might be some that uh, don't look so good. And I have a big trash can here that I have stuck tons of holes in the bottom of it to let air flow. I have a board on top to prevent any animals that are in the basement going after the acorns like mice and I got about over 10 pounds of acorns in this and for right now I just toss them in they'll dry out a bit in there and I just let them sit in there until I use the dehydrator 
Now, the dehydrator is a faster way to dehydrate. The, pr the primitive way takes about maybe about two months to dry. Um, about that. It could take three months. It could take one month. Determine on what your weather is and how you're drying them inside or outside. Uh, with the dehydrator, it takes a few days to maybe a week at the most. Determine on how strong your dehydrator is. I don't know exactly, just when it's ready, basically, as of this is not an apple bag, it is basically acorns in a one pick bag, not full, filled all the way up. So how do I deal with when they're dried? First off, here's a photo of what the dehydrator will look like when the, it's filled with acorns. So that's what it looks like. Um, so here's the nutcracker that a lot of people talk about. This was uh, purchased, uh, well, not the cheapest of the equipment I'm using. This was about like $200. You can buy it at Dave Bits Nutcracker, um, what it is. It says right on it, um, right there on the label. I like to use this and the dehydrator with stuff, but I didn't buy it. I asked them for uh, Christmas presents um, for the past few years, so that saved me money. Well, easy point is stick them right in. Now, it's easier for me to do it on that side, but with the camera right there, I'm going to do it on this side. So you just fill up this with the acorns as is a few of them and so yeah. just wait I forgot one thing I have to do a setting back here I'm going to take two rings off I have to do that and with the two rings taking off, I can make it slightly wider, just a little wider. And I just and I can go through pretty quick. Some of them are going around. You just keep filling this up much as can, maybe just a little dusty. Now the dust is a natural um, uh, thing that comes on the acorns. There's slight dust on them. And that's not anything else but on the acorns. So I can just process them going back and forth. So this batch of right here. Going around. So there's that part. We'll move back. Now, I got a pot right here to just pour some of the acorns in. Now, not all of them are cracked, just uh, some of them. So then I put the little catcher back in and I'm going to pour the acorns back through. But before I do that, I'm going to put it on a smaller setting. One that they can go through a little smaller. Make sure that they're all cracked out of the shells. So I just. Pull them right in. Not all of them, I believe. But. Yeah. I like pulling them back and forth. I'm going to pour them and then. Get to the point of just cranking away. Make sure that it's. Yeah, you have to be careful with your fingers on it. Now, I 
cracked up the uh, what I got here. The container's about half full. I'll pour it back into the pot here and examine if they're all cracked. If not, we'll go back through a smaller setting. So I see that it's smaller. So If you can see what that looks like, it's all ground up acorns. Now how do I get the meat out of the acorns? Well, I made a little nut sieve thing that I called pin shell nut sieve. Gets the small little shells out and all the dust. So I just took a piece of plexiglass, one inch uh, apart holes, about a quarter inch wide, just apart. And then a little board thing. Sit it on top of a pan. You just basically pour in some of the acorns. And just go back and forth. Move your hand through. Okay, now I just uh, separated them. Now on the bottom, you got the small shells. Now, I got another container here, and I'm going to just pour these in. Now that's the bigger shells, and the acorn meat that I'm going for. Now, there is some acorn meat still left in the smaller part right here, so I'll just pick out some of these. And toss them in. There's a few of the bigger ones. So that's good. So I'll put that over there. Now here's a pot uh, right there. So how do I deal with it now? Well, I'm going to actually finish dealing with this. Okay, and now we have the pin shells and the acorn separated, so I like to just discard the pin shells. I'm going to put them in that pot and then take them outside. And you just can taste the acorns that are right here. A little too much right there. Basically, you just spread them out. You can just pick the uh, good meat out as uh, what it is. Some of the stuff will be still in the shells like one or two in like a batch like this but what I like to do of uh, the next step that I'm going to show you in the next video of taking water and separating the um, shells a little bit more from the good meat now I'm going to show you how to take 50 percent of the shells out of where the acorn meat is so it's easier to pick out the meat so first we're going to do we're at the sink and we just take the acorn uh, mush and stuff mess put it right into a big pot or just dump it straight in um, a little dusty because the dust from the uh, natural from the shell. Um, now, the way that we do it is cold water. Never use hot water because we want to have a binding agent with the acorn. And if you use hot water, you will not have the binding agent. So I'm going to fill this up a little bit. Got a small bowl in the sink for in and out. So we're doing the float test uh, again. Uh, but this time we're taking the shells out 
and not the uh, the whole acorn. So most of the shells will float. So that's a good thing. All the acorn meat will sink, but some of the uh, acorn shells will sink too. So I'm gonna let this fill up. So give it a minute. Okay, now we have the water filled right up. So you just stick your hands in and then move that water and stuff around, toss it around as much as you can. And examine, there is no acorn meat in my hand. So I take this stuff out, I'm going to toss it, and I'm going to keep my hands towards the top of the water where the shells are. So look how many of the shells I'm taking out. And basically this takes out like 50 plus percent of the shells. And well, bad acorns too. So in these out. I'm gonna toss it around. The reason why I'm doing this in the sink, I'm making a mess already. And see how there's a lot less shells and more acorn meat. So there's that. Okay, the next step is taking the little bit more shells out and uh, make sure as many as these can come out. There's a little acorn meat in that. But any of the acorn meat that I mess in this bowl, squirrels can have. Now, some of the acorn shells fell in the sink. I'm going to take those out. But next up, the sieve to dump the water in the acorn. Now this is slightly heavy. Oh, there's a piece of acorn meat. Wash it off. Now, I'm going to dump this in a way that you can see what I'm doing. Dump that right in. Get as much as that acorn meat out of the pot. Yep, good. Just set to the side. Dry it off a little bit. And now, actually, it's more than 50%, more than 75. It's like 80 plus percent of the shells I took out by floating in the shells. So at this point, I'm going to show you in a second of what you do next because now these are wet but it takes about an hour with the dehydrator okay now we moved over towards a little bit more where the dehydrator is so I'm gonna just take the acorn meat and basically I have parchment paper that I have used it's a little unique in there and I just easily just spread it out reason why I'm using parchment paper that the, any of the smaller pieces of acorn meat doesn't fall through. So I'll fill this right up. That's it. Maybe use ball pans. A little faster. And this might take an hour to just dry them off to make sure that they're good to go. And when, they're, when this process is done, you can just pick out the good meat. There's going to be some bad meat still left inside of it in the, in, with all the acorns. Some bad ones, but not much. We mostly got the good stuff. And at this point, I'm going to just start dehydrating and plug this right in. And put the rest of that on there. Make sure when you do the dehydrating part, it's uh, always away from any shells and stuff that might heat up any of the uh, stuff that you have in the shells. So, yeah. So, I'm going to show you uh, uh, what you're looking at uh, when it's you're processing 
the acorns next with water okay when you have all your acorn meat dried up and stuff then you should fill it up on a, like a half gallon mason jar uh, or jar or any kind of jar I got this um, fill it about halfway with the dried ones that are the good acorn meat because they will absorb the water that's in there and they'll rise up a bit more the way that I'm doing this is the reason is pretty much to get rid of the tannic acid tannic acid is not digestible it is very bitter the reason why most people don't like acorns and the way that I do this is I take off the lid and I like to use the ring and then a piece of a paper towel I just put it on easily twist that on and I poke a hole for air flow and I just pour off the excess tannic acid that's in there. So there's going to be slight color coming from the acorns, but it's always going to have color. Now this way of leaching out the um, tannins and the acorns could take the way that I'm doing it with cold water it takes a little longer. Um, can take. I don't know, a week or maybe four weeks, but I don't know exactly. They're done when they're done is you just taste them. So I'm going to taste one maybe right now for you guys. So you just discard the paper towel at that point. So I'm going to just taste one. So. And basically it's going to be really bitter. So that doesn't taste good, but it's been only like four days. So you just add more cold water, and that's basically getting the tannic acid out. Fill it right up. Too much water there. And just put the lid back on. And do change the water about at least once a day to not have any molding or fermentation but do it about two to three times a day and that's the best uh, results that you'll be getting and you'll know when it's done when it's not bitter so like and subscribe visit me at larkinswildlevels.com see you there